have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. That is interesting. Call a place for mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1 800 803 6951. That's 1 800 803 6951. All right, have a good show. Welcome to a discussion of radical fundamental principles of freedom, rational self interest, laissez faire capitalism, and individual rights. The Yaron Brook Show starts now. All right, happy weekend, everybody. I hope you're having a great uh, weekend. It's beautiful here in Southern California uh, where I'm broadcasting this uh, for The Blaze. I got to, I got to visit The Blaze uh, on, uh, on Wednesday this last week and got to. Uh, Got to meet a lot of the people whose voices I know or whose names uh, I know. So that was that was a blast. Uh, and Glenn has, uh, you, you know, Glenn Beck has this, these amazing, amazing facilities in Dallas. So uh, really a lot of fun uh, to be there and a lot of fun meeting everybody and uh, lots of cool stuff planned for the future. So uh, we'll keep working hard and uh, hopefully you guys uh, – you know, you guys can help share the program, uh, let people know about it, and uh, call in. And you can call in today, 888-900-3393. Happy, really, really happy to uh, hear from uh, from any of you. Uh, we're going to be talking about a number of different things, I think. We're going to uh, start off with talking about uh, Amazon uh, and uh, the threats that Amazon is facing right now from the Justice Department for the S FCC, but also from just, there seems to be kind of a public backlash against Amazon. Amazon is now the new high-tech villain uh, of the day. So it uh, should be interesting uh, Interesting to hear your thoughts. What do you think? What's your experience with Amazon? Are you, you're an Amazon fan? You uh, skeptical? Are you Are afraid of Amazon? They're going to take over the world. They're going to control everything. They're going to be everywhere. Or are you like, hey, they've made my life better. I don't really care. Uh, so... Yeah, give me a call. Uh, let me know your thoughts on um, on Amazon, 888-900-3393. Uh, uh, we're also going to talk about Charlie Gaud, uh, this this uh, unfortunate, you know, really sad case of this young um, young kid in uh, in England, and uh, you know everything around that, the whole hoopla around around that, the demonstrations, there are no threats to his, to the doctor's lives and to, uh, to the hospital administrator's lives. Um, a lot going on around the Charlie Good. I guess there's a, there's a new specialist over there from the U.S. trying to decide if, if any treatment would be appropriate. The, the parents have received U.S. Uh, temporary residency, I guess, so they can bring, uh, bring Charlie to the U.S. Uh, you know, just a whole hoop a lot. Does it make any sense? Is it justified? Uh, why? Why? Why is there so much attention being placed on this case? We'll, we, we will talk about that. And then we'll see. The Democrats have a new uh, economic plan that they're going to reveal tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we've just got some hints about what that relates to. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And, uh, and a bunch of other things. You know, uh, 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 there's tons and tons to talk about. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of the show. And uh, again, feel free to call in and... Uh, Share any thoughts you might have. All right, Amazon, right? And, and Amazon is, um, the Democrats have been spending the whole week this week attacking Amazon and uh, claiming Amazon is gaining too much, I guess, market share, too much power. You know, Amazon has just bid to buy, not bid, actually, announced the purchase of Whole Foods. How many of you have been in, uh, inside of Whole Foods? They're going to purchase Whole Foods. Whole Foods has a small percentage of the grocery market in the United States, but it's just one more area in which Amazon, um, people are, are afraid, I think more emotionally than anything else, that Amazon is going to dominate our lives. They're going to sell us groceries. They already sell us pretty much everything else. And, you know, it started off with books and CDs, and now, now they're selling us clothes and every, everything. I mean, what can't you find? On, on the Amazon store. Of course, they've also got Alexa. We'll talk about Alexa in a little bit. You know, Alexa that sits in a home, you can talk to it. Or as some would say, it's spying on you. Um, and uh, so they're, they're dominant. They, they just announced a deal with Sears where uh, Sears will be sending, uh, selling the Kenmore appliances line through Amazon. 
Uh, so again, everybody's everybody's afraid, and indeed the shares of uh, uh, people like uh, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's went down quite a bit uh, because now Amazon's going to be competing with them on appliances at least. Uh, uh, s uh, in the past, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's have uh, been deemed safe from Amazon because you know you're not going to go and buy lumber from Amazon and not going to buy kind of the big stuff that that Home Depot and Lowe's kind of the, the, the home repair kind of stuff. But why not? I mean, isn't that coming? You know, so people realize, ooh, maybe Amazon can, can compete with these guys, so their shares have gone down. Uh, some of those, um, uh, some of that, uh, some of those guys uh, are, uh, are taking a hit financially. But, but, you know, the idea now is to try to sick the, uh, the Justice Department on, um, uh, on Amazon because it's, uh, it has uh, become such a dominant and such a uh, so-called monopolistic force out there. So that's, uh, in addition, the FCC, the F FTC, sorry, FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, has opened up an investigation about, um, about Amazon in terms of discount pricing that they are reporting. So the prices they report and then they compare to, we're cheaper, we've got a discount. And they're saying those prices are rigged, those prices are not true, they're not right. So just another, another way in which the government wants to come in and regulate and control and um, you know, tell Amazon how to, do their, how to do their job, how to do their business. So on every front right now, Amazon seems to be under siege and primarily, well, not under siege, it's not that bad yet, but under criticism, massive criticism by the media, by commentators, and, and the government's clearly looking at them. This whole Whole Foods um, deal is leading to the fact that, uh, you know, the government is looking at it. Why? Because every merger and acquisition today in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, every merger and acquisition in America, every significant one anyway, has to get approval from your local bureaucrat. Actually, not from your local bureaucrat, from your, well, to some extent, the local bureaucrats have something to say about it. States states can file against some of these mergers in certain cases. But your, your Washington, D.C.-based bureaucrat has to approve every significant large merger and acquisition deal in the United States. Now, now just think about that. The bastion of capitalism, the country that represents free markets more than any country in the world, you need to get permission, if you're Amazon, from the government if you want to buy Whole Foods. Amazon has, does not have more than 50% market share. It actually has much less than that in any area. It, it does not do uh, uh, you know, a significant amount of online sales. I mean, it's the biggest player by far, but it doesn't dominate it in the sense of more than 50%. Uh, Whole Foods is a tiny player in the grocery market. Doesn't matter. You still need government bureaucrat permission for the merger. And, and, and some people want to tell me and you and all of us that America is a capitalist country. In capitalism, you don't need government permission to do a merger and acquisition. You, you want to buy a company? You offer them a price. Their shareholders go, cool. And you buy the company. Not in America. Not in 2016. Not anymore. You need a stamp of approval for some bureaucrat to make the deal kosher, to make the deal okay. It, it really is, uh, you know, stunning, really. It really is quite stunning uh, that, uh, that this is the state of the world in which we live today. And, and, and this is how it functions, but nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to bat an eye. This is one of the issues, really, that the fact that, you know, everybody takes it for granted today. Everybody takes it for granted that the government can go after any business, that they can challenge any business model, that they can challenge any takeover, uh, you know, and, and it's completely okay for the government to do. This is the job of the government. The government is there to protect our so-called economic interests. The government is there to protect us from evil business. The government is there to centrally plan, to some extent, one extent or another, how the U.S. economy functions and how the U.S. economy runs. 
And that today is taken for granted by Republicans, by Democrats. You know, they argue about the at the margin. Oh, we shouldn't apply antitrust here. We should apply it. They, but they don't actually argue any kind of principle. All right, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When I get back, I want to talk about what antitrust is, what's its history, how it's been applied in the past. I want to talk about the famous Microsoft case, but also some other cases, Standard Oil and others, because the fact is that one of the biggest criticisms on capitalism is always, but there'll be monopolies, and monopolies are bad, and monopolies are evil. So we'll talk about whether monopolies are bad, whether monopolies are evil, and does antitrust really protect us? Does it do more harm than good? What is the role of antitrust law? And what would happen to the pure capitalism? Then I want to get back to Amazon because I have to admit, I'm a little biased. Not biased because I'm completely objective about this. Amazon is one of the coolest companies ever to exist on the face of the earth. And to some extent, Amazon of today is the Sears of yesterday. And it's, uh, it's kind of interesting in that context that Amazon is driving Sears out of business. This is exactly what happens, the beauty of capitalism. But we'll get to all of that. All right, you can join the conversation uh, by calling in. Uh, what are your views on Amazon? What are your views on antitrust? Um, any companies you hate that you want to sick the federal government on? Let me know. Uh, you're listening to the Ron Brooks Show, and we'll be right back after this break. You're listening to The Blaze. Selling author. Prolific media. Con- hey, Ron, can you turn your gain down a little bit? It's it sounded perfect, and then I guess you either got close to the mic or something and started peeking. Yeah, somebody uh, okay, let me see. Somebody chat on the chat said that it was uh, too low. How about that? How's that? Is that better? Podcast. Too low or too high? What it is? was too low. Amsterdam. So I increased it a little bit. No, I would say go. I made it lower because you were peaking. So can you turn your gain down and then I'll turn your volume okay, so up? Just turn the gain down. Is that, that make it and you can see. I can't tell now, but when okay, we go on the again. air, I will. Let me yell again. Is that, last is that better? I think that's a little too loud. See that, and when we live. With- Sorry. Got <laughs> forty acres. I would talk talk as loud as you think, and I'll tell you if it's peaking or not. It sounds scratchy when you get. Really loud. Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon the content. Services may not be available in all. Yes, but I would probably probably turn it down a little tiny bit more than you think. In event you may be entitled to financial compensation, and then I can adjust your volume. That way, it'll. It won't peak, but if you're too low, then I can turn you up. Serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Thank you. We're open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Attention. This is a public notice from Citizens Disability. If you are one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits from Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, Citizens Disability can help. You'll be given an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, and deal with Social Security. Best of all, there is no fee until you receive your benefits. We only get paid if you win your case. To get started with your free no-obligation consultation, call 800-504-1636. That's 800-504-1636. There are a vast number of conditions that can make you eligible for disability benefits, many that you may not be aware of so if you're disabled and unable i have to say i'm a huge amazon fan today again that's 800-504-1636 yeah that's it i feel like i buy something from there like every week six three six yeah do you own a business that needs promoting hi it's doc thompson from the morning blade oh well i know i'm looking for stuff and i'm always like why am i on this i don't need anything on communities that help build america and we want to help you grow your business and share yeah story if you have a business that you would like to have that's true email your information to building america at the blaze.com that's building america at the blaze.com we've created special building america packages to get your business the attention it needs building america at the blaze.com non-attorney paid spokesperson could your house go into foreclosure are you behind on your mortgage payments does it seem like the bank has no so we have a caller i'm going to get his info real quick through the call screener for help then we have oh. good news for you. Foreclosure you Protection you Services the, uh, can help page? save your home. Yeah. Okay. Specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. 
If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka. 39 kids. I remember talking to my parents about the size of this family that we had and how our life was not a life of a really rich family, but our life was rich in tradition. Our life was rich in laughter. Our life was rich in family unity. I grew up rich, not in terms of money, but in terms of love. Pure Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, we're talking. This is uh, the Yaron Brooks Show. All right, we're talking uh, Amazon today. We're talking. Uh, we're talking antitrust, broader than just Amazon, but Amazon is in the crosshairs right now of the Justice Department. They are after. They are after Amazon. They want. They want blood. Uh, at least the Democrats do. We'll see if the Sessions uh, Justice Department actually follows through. Sessions is pretty bad on these economic issues, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something coming out of it. But we'll see. We'll see. I think people at the AFTC might be a little better than they were under the Democrat regime. Um, all right. We, we've got uh, Dan from New York calling. So we're going to take this call, see what he, what Dan has to say about antitrust. Hey, Dan. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Great. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I was just going to say, I've been, I've been in pharmaceutical sales since 2006, and I actually was a part of a very large merger of two companies. I can name them if you want, but it was very interesting to see how it worked. Um, you know, it was up to the companies to do what they want to do. I didn't have anything to, you know, against it, and I'm not against that kind of stuff like you just mentioned before. It's free market. Sure. People decide to do what they want to do, what works best. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then they won't be, you know, maybe they won't be as, uh, as much market share yep. in that business if it's not a good idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Many, many mojas fail, and, and I'd say, you know, the success rate in mojas, particularly big mojas, is very low. Uh, you know, it's far more often that companies overpay and don't realize how difficult it is to actually merge companies, merge product lines, merge the business soft, the, you know, all the technical aspects of it, merge the corporate cultures. Very, very, very difficult. But what the government has any business in this, I don't get. What, what, what interest is there? Um, wh why do I care if Amazon merges with Whole Foods? I mean, I might care if I'm a customer of one of them and I worry that this might distract them from giving me good, um, uh, good service, but I'm not entitled to any particular level of service. I'm not entitled um, to anything as a customer. You know, I choose to, to, to shop there or I don't choose to shop there. I can leave and go shop somewhere else. Right. And the thing is, you, it was interesting what you just said, because when we were part of the merger, the company that I was originally that I was with first, who was buying up the company already had, I think they owned around 30 percent of the market of the, I mean, of that company. And they're taking the rest over. And it happened after the market crashed in 08. So the value of that company was down significantly. They did not want to be bought out at a cheaper price. And then they it became a hostile takeover. Kind of, you know, so it went a little bit, you know, yeah. it, more of a, you know, fist to cuffs of, oh, what are we worth? What should we be worth? Well, the market's down, so you're not worth as much as you would have been before. And definitely the culture was different because one uh, company was uh, international and another company was based here. And I was with a company that was international, even though yeah. I worked here. But yeah. you could see definitely the cultures definitely had some friction on how things were done and it how things were communicated down the line. So that, I would say, is sure. Why would government want to get involved either way? Because they wouldn't know the insights. I would, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but I would probably have more insights than employees would. That but it's business. nobody's business, right? I mean, companies, right. Uh, corporations owned by their shareholders. If the shareholders want to take uh, you know, the risk involved in doing a merger, as you said, uh, it's difficult. As, as I said earlier, it's difficult. It's hard to do. It's not easy. Uh, but that is a risk that companies are doing in the name of their shareholders. And if they lose, the shareholders lose. 
you and I have no say, have no, the company has no fiduciary duty towards us in terms of, in terms of whether it merges or doesn't merge and so on. And the government has zero to say about this. It's not the government's job to tell businesses how to run their business, to tell business how to treat their customers, to tell business what kind of mergers to do and what mergers work and what mergers doesn't. The, you know, let's talk a little bit. Thanks, Dan. I really, I really appreciate the call because let's, Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about why it is the government intervenes. I mean, the government intervenes because of this law called the antitrust law. And, the, the, you know, there are many, uh, the, the primary uh, law here was a law passed, I think, in 1890 called the Sherman Act. Uh, and it was followed up in 1914 by the Clayton Act and then by the, uh, the creation of the Federal Trade Commission Act, which the act created the Federal Trade Commission in 1914. And the Federal Trade Commission is supposed to monitor trade. And, and monitor these, uh, the well, trade internally in the U.S. So monitor the behavior of corporations. It's supposed to monitor um, uh, mergers and acquisitions. It, I would say that these three acts, 1890-1914, are the original uh, anti-capitalist, anti-free market, anti-business legislation that passed in the United States, in a sense. 1890, with the passage of the Sherman Act, was the beginning of the end of American capitalism. I mean, there were real problems with capitalism even before that in the sense that in capitalism, as it was practiced in America, in the sense that government was intervening even back then. Of course, we had slavery, which is very anti-capitalist, but, but we had subsidies of the railroads. We had all kind of cronyism related to the railroads. But other than that, you know, from the Civil War to 1890, Government pretty much left, kept its hands off of American business. There, there was regulation of banking. There were regulations. But as compared to today, it was almost free market heaven, almost. And then 1890, they passed this law. Why did they pass the law? Because they're afraid that these big businesses, steel companies, uh, uh, railroads, will come to dominate their industry. And what will happen, so they're afraid of the economic power that these businesses will have over the U.S. economy, that they will be so dominant that they will raise prices and the quality will go down. I'll give you an example. During the 1870s, Standard Oil, J.D. Rockefeller's oil company, had 90, I think it was 92 percent of all the oil refining capacity in the United States, 92 percent. So we said, oh, my God, there's a monopoly, and he's dominating. And all these books were being written, mudrucking, it was called, about how awful this is and how destructive it is for the economy and how destructive 60. it is for everything that's going on in the U.S., and this was anti-American. And Congress responded to, to, to this hysteria, and it responded bypassing the Sherman Act and bypassing the Sherman Act in, in an attempt to regulate and ultimately to break up the large businesses like Standard Oil, like U.S. Steel. Now, the fact is that during the reign of, of Standard Oil, having over 90% of all the oil refining capacity in the United States, prices went down every single year. Quality went up every single year. But, you know, we don't want facts to, to obscure the uh, the good intentions of government, right? Uh, they were trying to what? They, 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 they presented Ten. it as trying to protect us from those evil capitalists, from those evil monopolists. Three, two, All right, you're listening to your own book show. We'll one. be right back. Clear. Sorry about that. That was on my end. Okay. Also, you're uh, still peaking a little bit. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. Were you saying that I'm also loud in your ear as well? Yeah, while triggering Alexa. Pretty much yeah, any time is a that. good time to listen to the Blaze okay. Radio. Check out our live shows. These people. Yeah, you you'll start talking and it'll sound perfect. And I guess I don't know if it's getting you're getting closer to the mic or just like talking louder because you're uh, getting into whatever you're talking about, and then it just gets louder and starts crackling All right. so then i have to turn it down to try to prevent it from doing that but okay. the lower you go okay. 
the easier it is for me to adjust your volume. Okay, I Here just, at Platinum I just Tax lower, Defenders, we're so A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Yes. And we're yes. one of the okay. only tax <laughs> country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands, call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not... So you're in California, correct? This is may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto and... Awesome. ...the users. If you are... How long were you in Texas for? ...inning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa it's and suffered an injury or even oh, died, okay. you could be entitled... Oh, did you live in Texas? Did, ...compensation. Awesome. Call 800... Awesome. 4751 NBA, now. PhD. Zarelto and Prodexa have been... Nice. ...all bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary... What brought you to California? ...for a loved one has taken I these blood-thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial... Oh, no, cool. Station. Don't be a silent yes, victim. So Time is limited to find your claim. Moving, Call uh, now for free so information much. and a free my consultation. Com, Lines so are open 24-7. Call 800 Oh, wow. 4751. Yeah, that's kind of awesome, though. 4751. I'm kind of the same way where I... I not that I intentionally move because I want to move, but I just kind of get bored with where I'm at and I end up moving to like a different city or just kind of moving around just to change it up a bit. Do you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the yeah, most I mean, you'll get from government some, uh, benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a... F oh, is it, you said on Facebook Live? Yeah. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few... Uh, what kind of board is it? Receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. Yeah. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, all consolidated... Well, you're talking to one kind of payments yeah, but your balance is just not, not going down call right consolidated i was going to look at it and see if i could talk you through something but yeah, maybe, Fine. it will take maybe, years uh, to get out of debt call consolidated credit now 800-294-1788 they've helped over yeah million people with credit card debt they can consolidate your debts into one lower payment reduce your interest rate and get you out of debt fast if you're struggling with credit card debt consolidated credit programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, I got you. One three, not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services. What kind of computer are you using? Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. America Now. With 30. On the left, Democrats, liberals. They'll survive okay. America. <laughs> national pastime. They love that. Every night, Buck is in the Freedom Hut. Welcome to the Freedom Hut. Breaking down the important issues. Class anxiety, though, is the defining characteristic of the American experience. America Now. With Buck Sexton. Some Democrats I know are very patriotic. Look, it's a radio show. I'm having a little fun, everybody. Let's not get too crazy. 7 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. The Yaron Brooks Show. All right, so we're talking antitrust today. Pretty technical economic issue, but always the issue that people raise when they want to attack capitalism and the issue that the government uses to control business like no other one. Um, whether it's collusion, whether it's dumping, you hear Donald Trump talking about dumping all the time, whether it's monopolies, government is using these tools, these tools that the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act and 
and uh, the FTC, the creation of the FTC in 1914, made possible in order to dramatically regulate and control business, regulate and control, you know, what business does, how business does it, and um, is, is it justified? So my view, the only role of government, the only role of government is to, to defend the individual rights of Americans, to protect us from force and fraud. And there is no force and fraud being applied to us if companies collude. There is no force and fraud being applied to us if a, um, you know, if there is, uh, if a company has 92% share of, uh, you know, of its business. What force and fraud is it? You don't have to buy from that company. You don't have to engage with that business. Economic power, the power of a company, is not the same as political power. Political power is the power of a gun. Political power is about coercion and about force. Right? Economic power is, is the power is the power to give you a better service. It's the power to negotiate. It's the power, it's a voluntary power. It's you get to decide. So we confuse economic and political power all the time. And it's wrong for the government to intercede. It's wrong for the government to intervene, to try to dictate How much market share I should have? Whether I should have 90% market share, 50% market share, 20% market share. And it's none of their business. There's no rights being violated. There's no force being applied. All right. So the whole issue of antitrust is an issue of the government trying to pretend or imagining, or trying to convince us that our voluntary decisions are not legit, are not justifiable. And that what is required is a government oversight, a government central planner, somebody who knows better than we do about how business should be run, about what prices should be, about what products should be sold, about who should be able to merge with whom. And again, this goes back, back way back to the 1890s when they went after Standard Oil. And Standard Oil was as close to what would, one would call a monopoly as one has ever achieved, 92% of all oil refining in the U.S. And yet, and yet, prices went down every single year. So there was a moral argument against antitrust, not the role of government, even if the monopolist is abusing their power, which is very, very, very rare. I dare you to find me an example in history where a monopolist actually abused their power. You can call in and give me that example, 888-900-3393. Find me an example. Find me an example where a monopolist abused their power. 888-900-3393. But even if they did, even if they did, so what? You don't have a right to a particular price. You don't have a right to get particular goods. That's what private ownership means. I get to produce it. I get to set the price. You get to choose whether to buy from me or not. You don't want to buy from me? Don't. And if I raise my prices too high, and now we're turning to economics, what would happen if I raise, if I raise price too high? Competitors would arise. Competitors always arise, always arise. So that's why monopolies never survive, so-called monopolies never survive in a free market. That's why market dominates never, dominance never survives in a free market, not because of antitrust, not because of government, but because if you mistreat your customers, if you treat them badly, then customers will move to somebody else. A competitor will arise. 
All right, so um, that's the, that's the uh, uh, and you can see this example after example. So get Standard Oil. By the time Standard Oil was broken up, you know, 40, 50 years after it had gained that 92%, what percentage did it have of the oil market? Less than 20. It was tiny. Why? Because in the meantime, competitors had entered the business, and they were competing with it. You didn't need government to bring about the competition. All you needed is to leave the economy alone. Competition always arises because there's money to be made, particularly if a company gets lazy or has bad policies or does something that is not good for customers. So as long as they're not using coercion, as long as they're not putting a gun to your head and forcing you into their store, as long as you're not forcing you to buy their products, government has no business intervening. Con uh, uh, collusion, syndicates, whatever you want to call it, are just inefficient instruments. They break apart. Look at OPEC. They can't keep their members together. There's some wonderful stories in the, um, in the early part of the 20th century about how Dow, from Dow Chemical, competed against German uh, chemical companies who were colluding, who had created a syndicate, and who had driven the prices of chemicals up in the United States. And what Dow did is he produced more efficiently, and he undercut their prices. So what did the Germans do? Because they, had such a dominant, they were such dominant players, is they lowered prices, called dumping, below the price that Dow was selling. And in order to compensate, because they, they were losing money, it was below their cost, they raised prices in Germany. So they were making more money in Germany, where they had, quote, a monopoly. And then they were, and by the way, they, I think it was a government protective monopoly, and they lowered prices in the U.S. to screw Dow. So what did Dow do? Dow bought up the chemicals in the United States from the German companies really, really cheap at a price where they were losing money, shipped it to Germany, and undercut their price in Germany. <laughs> now, today you couldn't do it because of all the constraints and import and export and the regulations and all of that. You probably couldn't do that today. But in, in the early 20th century, before all these regulations, before all these controls, that's how Dow destroyed the German chemical cartel. And, and there are lots of stories like that, lots and lots of stories, how American entrepreneurs under freedom destroyed so-called monopolies, destroyed so-called cartels, destroyed so-called so collusion, destroyed it when companies tried to dump. Right? Every time the Justice Department has gone after somebody for antitrust reasons, you can show that those companies were, you know, had actually been lowering prices, quality had been going up, there was nothing wrong, there was no problem. Same thing with Alcoa. You remember IBM? IBM during the 1960s, the Justice Department went after them because they monopolized the computer business through their mainframe business. How long did that last? Digital had those mini computers, and then you had the PCs. And even though the suit was filed in the 60s, by the 1980s, the Justice Department had to withdraw its antitrust suit because it was so ridiculous, because it was so pathetic, because it was so obviously... The market had overtaken anything the government was afraid of. And now, now they're going after Amazon. All right, when we get back, I'm going to talk about why antitrust basically penalizes, potentially has the potential to penalize every business in America, why it's unjust. And we'll talk specifically about Amazon, why Amazon a heroic, why Amazon should be a company that's celebrated and not penalized. And I'll read some stuff that, that this one guy wrote about Amazon. It's just horrific. All right. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Ron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. Is there a military veteran and radical for capitalism? It's the Euro I'm Sorry, can you turn your gain down like two or three more decibels? It gets like perfect and then it just all of a sudden is and then it's good and then it just spikes and then it's good. 
to form this with Zudi Jasser and anyone like Linda Sassur who is dumb enough or dishonest enough okay. label to try to fool Americans into believing what jihad is or is not and ignores the fact that it's not just ISIS, it's not just Al-Qaeda who have hijacked. So if I'm looking at the same board that you have, at the very top there's like a red uh, knob that says gain. And at the very bottom, there's one that says volume. There's a slider. Yes, there's, yes. Okay, so. The slider's on max right now. Okay, so turn. Okay, so on the far right, you have like a, a meter so you can yeah. see. So what you want to do is turn your, before you bring your slider up, test in your mic saying test, test, test as you turn the gain up. Okay. And you want your meter to read about above the zero to about three or six, like the like okay. uh, yep. where it's just barely touching yellow. Okay, so that I do that with the slider down to zero? Yes, okay. and then from there, then you can adjust your volume okay, let me because one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, but it doesn't, the, the gain doesn't seem to have an impact on it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's just to get your meter reading from your microphone. So One, then when two, you three, okay. when you adjust the volume on your fader, that's will adjust how loud or soft it gets. Financial financial compensation. Yep. Don't be a One, silent two, victim. Three. Time is no, limited to file your claim. Call move. now for free information okay. and a free consultation. Oh. One, two, three. Two, three. See, but it doesn't go above like negative six here when I'm when I'm speaking, even if I put it to max on the gain. Then it must be running through something different one two three one two three one two three i don't know what that means yes no it's not okay one two three one two three one two three yeah and still it's very low and it's not changing based on me changing the uh, gain. Okay. Where would, okay. Yeah, it looks like it is. One, two, three. Yeah, it looks like it is. How, how does that work now? I'm plugged into the headphones, yes. Well, and the COMEX is plugged into the board, but it's getting your volume is, is very high and my volume is very low. So, But my volume is in the board already. It's not going through the COMEX, right? Your, vo your volume is a little lower, I think. Yeah. Yes, it seems to be adjusting. All right, I think I think my volume's now louder because of the phantom, but I'm not sure why. All right. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I don't know. I can't tell. All right, here we go. Or close. All right, they're saying on Facebook to keep it as it is that the sound level is good, right? All right, let's see what they say. Yeah, I need I need somebody like you here. <laughs> Cuz every time I do this, something changes. Yeah. All right, maybe this is perfect. People are saying this is good. All right. You'll have to tell me sometime what the phantom, phantom power is actually doing that button. Okay. You're still very high. Okay. Okay. Well, it could be too, I have, wait a second, it could be that I have your volume too high on the Comrex. That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. I probably raised that. Okay. 
I can't hear anything. All right, so we're talking about antitrust. We're talking about Microsoft. Let me tell you a little bit about antitrust. Then we got a call from Skyler from Delaware. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, about antitrust. Why antitrust is such a vicious, uh, vicious, vicious law. Think about it this way. Every business in the United States could be prosecuted and under antitrust laws. And this is how, right? If you are, um, if, if you are underpricing, if you are selling very, very low, below the cost of all your competitors, if your rate is lower than what your competitors is, then that's an antitrust violation. You must be dumping. You, you, it's, it's, it, it's not fair for you to, to try to steal market share by selling below supposedly your costs, right? So that's dumping, right? And, and you hear dumping all the time. I mean, uh, uh, Trump is constantly complaining about steel dumping in this country and other. And, and in the 80s, the Japanese were accused of dumping microchips and, and we controlled microchips imports from Japan because they were dumping. What, what does dumping mean? They were selling them cheap. So it's a problem. It's a problem now when you sell stuff cheap. All right. What if you sell it expensive, like above the market price? Like you're making, a ni- supposedly, again, you're making a nice profit margin and people are buying it and you're selling it above the market price. What does that say? Well, you must have a monopoly because otherwise, why would people buy your stuff so expensive? So now we go after you for monopoly, right? You have pricing power. In a free market, you're not supposed to have pricing power. What happens if you sell exactly the same as all your competitors? You know, at the same price. Then you must be colluding. Then you must be colluding. So antitrust laws go after you whether you sell your product for cheap, expensive, or the same as everybody else. Now, part of this comes from a false view of competition. It's called perfect competition. If you've studied economics, you might have studied this. It's this idea of perfect competition. Perfect competition is where all companies look exactly the same, have exactly the same information and knowledge, produce exactly the same product, and therefore none of them have any pricing power. Now, economists teach this as some kind of crazy ideal. It's not. It's insanity. Nobody wants to live in a world like that. What we want is companies to innovate, to create something special, to produce something better, to keep pushing the envelope. What we want is companies to strive to achieve monopoly power. Because what is a monopoly? In a sense, monopoly power, in quotes. What is a monopoly in that sense? It's some comparative advantage, some competitive advantage. That's great. Every entrepreneur who ever started a business is trying to create a comparative advantage. He's trying to make money. He's trying to create a profit. Apple, part of its comparative advantage beyond the good products that it sells is the name Apple. We associate it with a certain type of product, with a certain type of experience. Amazon, you know what really blew away Amazon originally early on? Was the one click button. You found something you liked, you clicked once. You didn't have to keep putting on your... This is years and years ago. That was an incredible innovation that moved everything forward, but it gave Amazon a comparative advantage. And once it established that comparative advantage, once we put our credit card information in Amazon and we had this one-click feature, even if other people established a one-click feature, we'd still have to reestablish, give them our profile, give them our credit card number, it's all on Amazon already. I can go buy it on Amazon. I need to put that credit card information again into somebody else's website. Who wants to do that? But that's the whole point, is that these companies are constantly striving to try to give them, to, to, to figure out a comparative competitive advantage so that they can make money by providing us with great value and great service. And yet that comparative advantage is exactly what deems them so-called violators of antitrust. And that's what justifies the government going after them. Think about every startup. Think about every entrepreneur. Think about every new company. What is it striving to do? To create that comparative advantage. To create 
profit margin, to create an edge over all its competitors, to create something that the competitors can't do. So a whole market works in exactly the opposite way to the so-called perfect competition model, and yet that is what's being taught. And that same perfect competition model, which is, which is one of the most destructive things that anybody teaches at universities today. The flip side of that is monopolies are bad. Monopolies raise prices. Monopolies reduce quality, even though there are no examples of that or, or almost no examples of that in history. That's what's being taught to our students. It's not surprising, all of this. All right, we're almost at a break. As usual, I've got more to say about this than we can cover in an hour. Um, we will... Uh, we will resume after this hard break. You're listening to your Ron Brooks show on the Blaze Radio Network. All right.
expensive covered car repairs. Monthly payments are very affordable. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800-219-6614. That's 800-219-6614. 800-219-6614. Cancellation fee may apply. Subject to eligibility. Not available in Missouri and Washington. Waiting period and deductible apply. Coverage provided and administered by Warrant Tech Corporation or its affiliates. Not affiliated with any manufacturer or dealership. Visit tocowarranty.com for complete terms and conditions. Direct from the historic newsreels of Selznick Talking Pictures. In cooperation with the Internet. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's biography. Few people. One, two, three. The jihadist mentality is the sense that the state's identity. was that that was weird (laughs) so now you know the ad the commercial are very very low going into the computer there's a white button just under the USB input that if I press it suppresses my voice and it increases the commercials And if it's up, my voice is fine and the commercials are depressed. Uh, Something with MST, auxiliary one, two. It's the white button just below the USB input. Okay, afterwards, yeah. All right, we're back. Thanks for staying through the break. And uh, we're talking about, we've been talking about Amazon. We've been talking about antitrust more broadly. And, and I, so I want to summarize. Antitrust laws are massive infringements on the rights of businesses. They're massive infringements on the rights of entrepreneurs. They're massive government intervention into our lives, into our economy, into the way our economy runs. If you want to do good for the U.S. economy, get rid of the antitrust laws. And as I explained, as a businessman, you're guilty under, under antitrust, whether you, whatever you do almost. If you sell too high, if you sell high, if you sell low, if you sell like everybody else, you're guilty no matter what. Basically, anti-law, antitrust laws are laws that are there to penalize success, to penalize successful companies, to penalize companies that, 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 that do fantastically well. And what is the indication of doing fantastically well? That they gain massive market share. That's the real essence. That's the real purpose. That's what antitrust laws are there for. They're there to penalize, which is uh, what makes them. So large is so horrific. So horrific. All right. Let's take a call from Skyla. He's been waiting patiently on the line for a long time. Hey Skyla, how's it going? 
I'm good. I'm good. You got to speak up. Speak up because I think I think your volume's low. Yeah. Alleged monopoly and subsequent breaking up. Well, Marbell had an alleged monopoly because it had a monopoly that was protected by government. You see, the one thing that creates real monopolies, the one thing that creates real monopolies is government. It is um, government intervention. So uh, AT&T, Marbell, was protected by government from competition. And you couldn't compete without getting permission from the government. And the government restrained competition. So there was only really one provider of telephone communications in the United States before the 1980s, before the 1980s, before some entrepreneurs managed to break the spell. And then Congress fan finally said, no more protection. We're going to break you up. Um, there would have never been a Marbell if uh, the markets had been free to begin with. So Marbell is an example of the kind of monopolies that are really damaging. And the really damaging monopolies are monopolies that the government protects. I'll give you an example right now. The post office. Try to deliver first-class mail, and you go to jail. You go to jail. But so, so uh, that, is a, that is a real monopoly. Try to compete with Marbell. You go to jail. right? And, and there are lots of examples of this. I mean, there's some stunning stories about people who, uh, who develop technologies that Ma Bell didn't like and how Ma Bell used the government in order to suppress those technologies, in order to drive those technologies out of existence. Um, and, and it, 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 you know, it was, it was real. It, it was worse than just cronyism because Ma Bell was basically being protected by government laws, by the government completely. All right. So, thanks, Kyle. I really appreciate the call. So this is the point, right? Government is force. Government is coercion. Government is the fist, the gun. You can't disagree with the government unless you're, risk, uh, unless you're willing to risk going to jail, unless you're willing to risk having force inflicted on you. Markets about voluntary transactions. Markets, you can walk away. You can resign. You can quit. You can go somewhere else. You don't. There's nothing... In markets, you're not allowed to use a gun in a marketplace. If you use a gun, that's the one job of the government. The one job of the government is to protect us from people using guns, from people defrauding us, from people doing things that curse us. So the marketplace is a place free of coercion until the government steps in. It steps in. To prosecute antitrust, that's coercion. Breaks up a business. Why, why would you break up Standard Oil? Why would you want to break up Microsoft? Do you know what Microsoft's sin was in the 1980s? 90s, sorry, in the 1990s? It offered, and why the Justice Department went after them? Because they offered a browser for free. Those of you old enough to remember this, it, you know, in, uh, in 1996, I think it was, when Netscape went public. Netscape was the browser everybody used. And we paid for it. We bought it. It cost 70 bucks. And then Microsoft did something brilliant. It bundled the brow its browser, Internet Explorer, with DOS. So you got a free browser when you bought DOS. And Netscape flipped out. And they got angry. And they went to the government and said, that's, that's dumping, the equivalent of dumping. They're undercutting our prices. And that's when the Justice Department went after Microsoft, right? So you can't undercut your competition by offering a product for free. So in a free market, there is no coercion, and therefore there are no monopolies. Monopolies, by the essential characteristic, are coercive. They are dominant players. But those dominant players will not stay dominant unless they offer great service at a great price. Competitors would compete them out of business. There's always competition. There's always somebody waiting on the wings to get you. If Amazon messes up, there's Jet.com, which Walmart bought, which is just waiting to pounce. And there's probably 100 entrepreneurs out there who are waiting to create the next great thing that would drive Amazon out of business. 
How long has Amazon even existed? Since the late 1990s. And, you know, before that, Amazon drove out lots of other businesses that were probably considered monopolies at the time. All right, we've got Daniel on the line uh, from Minnesota. Hey, Daniel, what's up? Go ahead. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I want to make uh, two points. Um, unfortunately, you just made them for me. I was going to bring out the Microsoft example, and then also just the difference between a non-course of monopoly and a course of monopoly. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to call ahead uh, fast the next time, but no worries there. So I guess I'll just bring up the, the psychological trauma that, uh, that, well, for example, the Microsoft case had on Bill Gates. I mean, here we have one of the most brilliant minds of the 21st century, and can you imagine just the, the trauma he goes through when, when all that time and effort and energy and that I suppose. Yeah, no, absolutely, and 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 look. That's absolutely right. I mean, there's a massive cost to all this. And the cost really is that it completely demoralizes the companies that the government goes after. The government is going after you with a gun. The government is going after you with the full force of government. It is, it is there to stop you from doing what you're doing. You invested all your effort, all your time, all your energy in this company, Microsoft, let's say. You built something that is changing the world. That is incredibly valuable. It was the most valuable company in the world at the time. And the government comes in and says, you can't do that. We know better. This is bad. This is not in the so-called pub public interest. And they basically shut you down. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for the call. Um, it, what's important here to understand is the difference between economic power, the power to negotiate, the power to offer value for value, the power to offer product for money, the value to offer services and coercion, which is a gun, which is force, which gives you no alternatives. You can't shop somewhere else. You can't do something else. You are forced to do what you are told. And this is exactly what this country was established to prevent. It was established to provide for freedom, for us to be free, which means no coercion which means letting business function independent of a government gun telling business what business practices are good and what are bad. All right, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to try to wrap it up on, uh, on uh, discussing Amazon. You're listening to your Ron Brooks show. We'll be right back after this break. Yeah. It'll we're, it'll uh send it to the, your aux, whatever's plugged into your aux, which is the three uh plugins to the right of that. Is anything plugged into those? Time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our Is anything plugged into your left or right main? Up in the top right corner? Yes. I use web different uh, and on demand programming. You were doing <laughs> okay. front of work because our tractor was in the shop. All at the blaze.com slash radio. Okay. So you want to make sure that that white button under the USB send is uh, pushed up so it's not pushed in. Okay, but now, now I don't have volume on the commercials. Can't hear them at all. Yep. It's all the way up. If I click it in, then my volume goes away. Again, this is a 30-second biography. Bill Clinton. Right. Um...
And what I was doing during the previous segment was pressing the button every time a caller called so they could hear him and then depressing it when I was speaking. But that can't be right. You know, I don't know anymore. <laughs> The COMEX is just plugged into the board. That's right. I mean, generally, your volume is far higher than the commercials volume. Could that be on your that's on your end, obviously. In the back, I have, I have calls. I have a button for calls, but it doesn't, af doesn't affect much. Oh, it says Comrex. Just Comrex everywhere. It's a silver with like bra black planet plastic sides. It says Comex Corporation on the back. All right, let's talk a little bit about Amazon itself and, and about this case uh, regarding Amazon. Uh, again, I, you know, I think the whole issue of monopolies is absurd, but th th there definitely is this envy um, with regard to Amazon. There's a certain hatred, and, and it's in our culture. It's deep in our culture, particularly uh, on the left, but also I'll read you a, a, a piece here by somebody on the right. There's this deep envy. There's this deep resentment of uh, success, of successful people and successful companies. And particularly, uh, there's this uh, adoration of the mom and pop store, the mom and pop, uh, you know, grocery store, the mom and pop corner store, whatever. And uh, a resentment of Amazon basically dominating so much of what we do. And, and uh, you know, the left, you expect this and, and you get this all the time and the Democrats are pushing for there to be an investigation. And, you know, here's Amazon who's, I don't know about you guys, but it's changed my life completely. I mean, everything I buy, I, I buy on Amazon, I buy somewhere else online, but I was taught to buy online by Amazon. And my standard for what an online buying experience should be is Amazon. It's, it's the standard. It does it best, right? So I might compare and I might look at other sites, but at the end of the day, Amazon is how I think about online shopping. Now, some people resent that. They go, oh, they have such a dominant position. I respect that because it's made my life better. I get Amazon Prime. I get all this stuff shipped for me two days, free shipping. And if I don't like it, I return it. I mean, it's unbelievable. Can you imagine? I mean, I can't remember shopping before Amazon. I certainly it did a lot less shopping, so I've, I've shopped more with Amazon than I would otherwise. But I shop much better. I can compare instantly different products, different prices. If I don't trust Amazon's pricing, like the so-called FTC investigation right now, I can look at Best Buy. I can look somewhere else. I can check. This idea that we're so stupid and so ignorant that we need the government to come and watch over us and protect us from the evil businessmen is so ridiculous, particularly in the era of the web, where we can 
select and and then there's the comment section and stars and I can read what other people think about the product and whether they have good experiences or bad experiences I mean it's it has improved shopping and therefore improved the material well-being of human beings by so much it's it's literally unimaginable unimaginable so it's just unbelievable to me that anybody would have a complaint uh, against Amazon. And they keep innovating. And they keep proposing new ways to do this. They keep proposing new ways to improve our lives, to provide us with a better shopping experience, to provide us with better tools in our world. I mean, we use Alexa all the time at home now. We use it in a pretty, pretty primitive way. Um, like, like, it, like 20 years ago, 20 years ago, how would you know what the weather was? Well, you'd have to look in the newspaper. Right? You'd literally have to look in the newspaper. What's the weather forecast? Or you'd watch your local television news. How painful is that? How, who's watched local television news in the last 20 years? I haven't. I never watch local television news. I hate it. Now, now, okay, so about 10 years ago, you looked it up on weather.com. Five years ago, whatever. Looked it up on weather.com. And you got a great detailed forecast and you could tell. Now I say, Alexa, what's the weather going to be tomorrow? Or what's the weather going to be tomorrow in Miami? And she tells me. And it's amazing. And it's cool. Or Alexa, you know, I've got something in the oven. Tell me when 30 minutes are up. And she tells me. Now, that is an improvement of human life. It makes my life easier and better. And of course, it can do... Alexa can do a lot of other things that I don't use her for. Play me a song, any song I want, from the entire music library of the human race, of history. And she'll just play it. I mean, the convenience, the benefit to human life, it's just unbelievable. Now, people, what do they bemoan Amazon for? They've driven the mom and pop stores out of business. This guy writing on... And I couldn't believe it. Like, this is on, um, what's it called? What's the website called? Uh, I didn't save the website. Pajama Media. I used to be on Pajama TV a lot. Right? This is Pajama Media. This is supposed to be pro markets. And here's this guy writing, the guy named, uh, it, also took, it also took his name away from the article. That's too bad. I wanted to shame him here because I, I, I don't, his name is, does not appear. Anyway, it's called the Amazon Washington Post and why it needs to be destroyed. Destroyed. Amazon needs to be destroyed. Why? Because it demolished bookstores, big box stores, department stores, grocery stores, record stores, and even smaller retail outlets, putting small businessmen, struggling authors, and garage bands out of business. Really? There are more garage bands now than ever before. Because platforms like Amazon have made it so easy to distribute your music or distribute your writing. Now, it's funny because this guy's an author. And he says, oh, they make it so difficult for me to make money. The royalties are so low. So he's complaining, right? And then, ooh, the shares of Home Depot have gone down. I mean, this guy wants buggies to still exist. Why have an automobile industry? Imagine all the industries, automobiles destroyed. It's so frustrating. It's so, so frustrating that, that people still hold uh, these ideas. So, um, but this is what we have, right? So he, he, he's bemoaning that Amazon is destroying Home Depot and Lowe's, that it's going to destroy Whirlpool and Sears. I mean, Sears is dying. All, you know, uh, uh, shop, stores out there, Bigger motor stores are slowly dying. They're dying because they can't provide as good a service as Amazon can. So yeah, we could go backwards. We could go to, to looking in the newspaper for what the weather is. Or we can embrace the future. We can embrace technology. We can embrace the far, far superior buying experience that Amazon has provided. Yeah, his name is Michael Walsh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Michael Walsh writing for Pajama Media. So what we need is to celebrate Amazon, to thank Amazon. Amazon is this amazing company that does so much for our lives, 
that has improved our daily shopping. I don't go to the mall anymore. I hate malls. I hate going shopping. My wife even clothes. My wife buys clothes online, Amazon, eBay, other places. Now try them on. They're no good. Send them back. Same with shoes. Same with everything. Why go shopping? What a waste of time. Having to walk around there. I can even, even window shopping I can do online today. And the thing is that these people, these Luddites, these people who want to take us backwards, it's not enough that they want that experience. They can. They can go to the mall. They can go to the shops. They can go shopping. They can buy a newspaper and look up the weather. But they want to force, force, impose their will on me and you. They want to tell us how we should live. They want to break up Amazon. They want to destroy Amazon. And they want to impose that world on us. They want to use coercion to destroy our lives. All right. Um, I'm going to shift topics after the break. We've got a break coming up. We're going to talk about Charlie God uh, and what's, what's happening with Charlie God. Uh, and um, I encourage you again, if you, if you want to call it, Stuart, I know you're holding, but I really don't want to get into songwriters royalties uh, today. I don't want to get into IP. Um, we, we can do that another time. 888-900-3393 if you want to talk about Charlie God after the break. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully you learned something about antitrust today and about, about uh, how much I admire Amazon. All right. We, you're listening uh, to the Ron Brooks Show. Uh, we're on the blaze.com radio network. There you go. Absolutely. And you can do all that. <laughs> yes, I haven't solved this problem. I'm going to, I don't know what, um, if I send you a photo of the board, would that help? Okay. Somehow the, the, the volume on the commercials is not going to into my system. Yes. Yep. I live this life. You're a scam artist. The divorce. Why now? It's just time. Don't go picking out that wedding dress anytime soon. Ooh, because he's still married. <gasps> it's done. You're done. We're done. Okay, that's down. That just happened by itself? You didn't do anything? <laughs> No, no, nothing. Wasn't me. How would I affect the commercials? Yeah.
local advisors, and a personalized list of senior living communities. All right, we're back. And the two things I wanted to say uh, before we drop Amazon completely about this, uh, this horrific article uh, that was in, uh, you know, a supposedly conservative publication. Now, maybe, maybe he was being trying to be clever or cynical or whatever it, it, by Michael Walsh, but, but this seems real. So he's complaining about uh, Amazon is like, Amazon is doing to business what Sears did to small bomb and pop stores 100 years ago. And he's saying, yeah, Amazon's just like the Sears catalog. So what's he complaining about? Sears? That Sears should have never existed? I mean, it's, it's, it's just mind-boggling. And then uh, he gets to the real crux of it, I think. And that is his complaint about the fact that Amazon owns the Washington Post and therefore owns this, uh, you know, false news, so-called false news in quotes, false news apparatus. And um, and that's really doing that in order to gain political power and how Donald Trump is going to go after them, you know, justifiably because they own and maybe these companies shouldn't own media because it's too much. In it. It's just a mess, just a complete and utter mess. So, uh, you know, this is this is this is where we are today. All right. Let's skip topics and uh, and talk about uh, Charlie God. Uh, you know, I don't know how many of you are following this. But this is a story of the baby, uh, of, of the, the young boy in, uh, in England, who has a very rare, very, very, I think there are only 16 cases ever of this disease, uh, genetic disorder that is basically uh, incapacitating uh, his, his, his brain. It, it goes to the brain and it makes it impossible for the brain uh, to, to properly grow. It's called mitochondrial depletion syndrome mitochondrial is a, is a is a genetic genetic material um, here's how it describes his situation he can't breathe without a ventilator move he's deaf he has severe epilepsy um, and they are saying again the doctors at least are saying that he has severe brain damage now the parents now he's in this uh, British hospital uh, all of his treatment is being paid by uh, the British Health Services because they have socialized medicine. And a decision has to be made. At, at what point do you disconnect this child from the ventilator and, and let him die? I, I mean, there's no life here for him. He, he's got severe brain damage. He can't breathe without the ventilator. Who wants to live that way? Why, why would anybody want to live that way? And And, of course... Who's paying for it? Now, it's socialized medicine. 
So who gets to make that decision? Under socialized medicine, the hospital gets to make that decision, or court, in this case, gets to make this decision. Now, the parents, the parents don't want the child disconnected, and the parents have latched onto the idea that there's this experimental medication treatment in the United States, and they want to take the child and move him to the United States to experience this, medica- this uh, experiment. Um, and they've actually raised the money to do it. Now, in a free market, in a completely free market, yeah, the, the, the parents would have a complete decision about what to do here. And they would decide where to take the child as long as they're paying for it. I don't think insurance companies would be willing to keep the child on the ventilator and ship him to the United States for a treatment that is probably 90% plus not going to do any good. And even if it does good, it's not going to repair the brain damage the child already has. So we'll get to the moral question of whether should one even try to save this child. But it would be, it's the, it's the parent's responsibility. It's, it's their child like it or not, they would go through the motions, they would pay for it, they would do whatever is necessary. One of the great evils of socialized medicine is, it's not not your decision. It's not the parent's decision. It's not even the insurance company's decision. It's the government's decision. It's a court's decision. Now, what does a court got to do with this? What the court has to decide how to use public money, government money whether to keep some people alive or other people not, because if you kept everybody alive all the time, the social system would run out of money, right? Would run out of money. So socialized medicine is a disaster. This isn't a good case to illustrate it, though. This kid is dead. This kid, in my view, should be allowed to die. Keeping him alive is an abomination. And at the same time, millions of people, millions of people are being harmed by socialized medicine. Millions of people are standing in lines to receive MRI or any kind of treatment. Thousands of people are not being treated with the most effective treatment for cancer or heart disease because there's not enough money in the budget and they can't pay for it themselves. The injustices committed daily on healthy adults are constant. And nobody cares. This is the great mystery, right? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the thousands of people dying because of socialized medicine. Nobody cares about the fact that thousands or millions globally of people are not getting the best cancer and heart disease treatment because of socialized medicine. Nobody cares that people die in line waiting for the MRI. But you take one child with severe brain damage, and parents who are going to do anything in their power to keep him alive. And suddenly everybody cares. People are flying to England to demonstrate. To demonstrate. Why? Why is this the case that is galvanizing us? Arguably, if you cared about the child, you would argue for them disconnecting him. Letting him die. You can't say that about adults. You can't say that about healthy people who are just waiting for an MRI or somebody who's got the beginning of cancer and not going to get the right treatment. That's the real evil. It's because of the altruism in our culture. It's because the more the more somebody is suffering, the more we got to care. The more somebody is closer to death, the more we got to care. The more They're damaged, brain damage in this case, the more we have to care. But that's upside down. I mean, you know, I feel horrible for this kid. I feel horrible for parents. As a parent myself, I can't imagine what they're going through. But the fact is, this kid will never have a life. This kid, no matter what the treatment does, will never have the parts of his brain that have not grown properly. Those won't come back. It's true, the court system shouldn't be deciding this. But this isn't the case on which to fight socialized medicine. This isn't the case on which to take a stand. Because I think the parents are wrong here. I think the parents should allow the hospital to let the child die. And it's only 
this awful, awful sense of, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is about us that, that, that well, I do know, it's this, it's this awful morality that we all live under. The, the, the worse off somebody is, the more we want to jump to his defense. And note, note that President, Ob President uh, uh, Trump has come in on this issue. And the Pope, the Pope you'd expect it, has come in on this issue. Keep the kid alive. Keep the kid alive. Bring him to the United States. Congress has given the parents temporary residency in the United States so they can bring him without going through the visa process. Why? There are thousands, millions of people who would love to come to the United States to get health treatment. People who could actually live a, a, a good life if they got that treatment. Why are we making this exception for this child? Why is this what is motivating us to give temporary residency here for Congress to go into session in order to address this? I mean, this is just horrific. It's horrific that Congress would do such a thing. I mean, if Congress wants to pass a bill saying all the victims of socialized medicine in the world or in Great Britain or in Europe or whatever, if you want to come to the United States to get better treatment, we will give you a special visa that is, makes it easy for you to come to, into the United States to get special treatment. I'm all for that. That'll be great. Come over, get the treatment, pay for it here for everybody. But to pass a bill for one child, a child that actually probably will not be able to be helped by this treatment, and even if he is helped by this treatment, will stay crippled, and, 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 and cognitively deficient because his brain will never have developed enough. So he will never live a human life. But that's what these people want, I guess. That's what these altruists want. They want this kid to suffer. All right, we're going to take, uh, we're gonna take a break to, to, and, and we'll come back. Uh, happy to get your calls. What do you think about, I know, I know what I'm saying is not very popular, what do you think about this Charlie God thing? 888-900-3393. You want to defend, you want to defend Congress and the president for making a big deal out of this? 888-900-3393. What would you do with Charlie God? We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Ron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. and deal with Social Security. Best of all, there is no fee until you receive your benefits. We only get paid if you win your case. To get started with your free no-obligation consultation, call 800-504-1636. That's 800-504-1636. There are a vast number of conditions that can make you eligible for disability benefits, many that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call Citizens Disability today. 
Again, that's 800-504-1636. 800-504-1636. That's Citizens Disability. 800-504-1636. Don't miss the Chris Salcedo Show. Sean Spicer is out at the White House. Is this a sign of more shakeups inside of Donald Trump's administration? And will the GOP get their act together on the repeal of Obamacare? And if they don't, what is the recourse for we the people? It turns out the founding fathers gave us a remedy for a government that grows beyond the consent of the government. It's called Article 5. The Chris Salcedo Show. Weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands, call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. Paid monetary spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm of Principal Office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Xarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood thinning drugs Xarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Xarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. 32, we come back. You should listen to the Blaze Radio. Here are some ideas. While brushing your cat, while defending your gender, while honoring Harambe, pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. This is Piero Pelka. Saturdays live on the Blaze Radio Network. Podcasts. Welcome to the Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show. And on-demand programming. Donald Trump is winning in this fight against the press. All at theblaze.com slash radio. All right, we're back, and we're talking about Charlie God, this this uh, poor kid who um, who has a genetic disease that is basically uh, destroying him. It's eating him alive, and uh, basically he is going to be crippled for the rest of his life. He's no matter what the treatment does, he he is going to have an unfunctioning brain for the rest of his life. He's not going to be able to live as a human being. Now, look, I completely agree that it should be 100% the parent's decision if they have the money to pay for it, which they do, uh, and it shouldn't be a political issue. It shouldn't be up to the state to make these decisions. But you have socialist medicine. The state is making these decisions every single day. Why is this kid become the, the symbol, the, the, the thing that conservatives are latching onto to try to attack socialized medicine? This isn't the good example. The real example is every single day people are dying because of socialized medicine. Every single day people are denied choices because of socialized medicine. Every single day a system is collapsing. Our healthcare system is collapsing more and more and more because, because of socialized medicine. So Charlie God is a bad example because there's no good outcome. It's not like under private health care. There'd be a good outcome from this. If England had a private healthcare system, the parents would pay $1.3 million now, they've got $1.3 million, to keep them alive, basically as, as a vegetable, I guess, and, 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 and probably a suffering one. There'd be no positive outcome here, and he'd probably die. Yes, 
Maybe they'd learn something by, by treating him. Maybe they'd learn something about medicine. But who the hell wants their kid to be a, a guinea pig of experimentation when the chances of actual living a life as a human being are basically impossible? I agree completely that, with the point that it's not. It should not be the government. It should not be the hospital making these decisions. In, in a private healthcare system, it wouldn't be. This is clearly a, you know, a horrific one example of millions of examples of why socialized medicine is so, so bad. You have, you know, what do you call it? Death councils, death committees who decide who lives and who dies. But it's, this isn't the example. And why, again, why is our president getting involved? Why isn't he, why isn't he denouncing socialized medicine every single day? Why denouncing it only with Charlie God? And he's, he didn't really denounce socialized medicine when he came out to show his caring about Charlie. Why, why is Congress getting involved? If socialized medicine is so bad, first of all, Congress could repeal Obamacare. That would be good. It could repeal Medicare. That would be good. Those are socialized medicine programs. Let's not become England. That's good. But again, this child is not an example, a good example of the true evils of, of socialized medicine. Um, I think he's, he's being used. He's being used but primarily by, by uh, elements of the religious right all over the place. He's being used. And, and look, the protesters after, outside this hospital uh, giving death threats to hospital administrators, giving death threats to uh, nurses and doctors, disrupting the functioning of the hospital. I mean, where were they when, again, hundreds of people every single day are suffering because of socialized medicine? They didn't care. But you give them one really, really suffering kid, one child who cannot live a normal life as a human being, and they go nuts. It, 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 it offends them suddenly. Why are you fighting for this life and not the lives of normal people, not the lives of healthy people? It, 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 it's sad, right? It's sad. And we're not fighting for his life. They're fighting for his life to keep him alive. It reminds me of the Tibby Shivo kiss. You remember the Tibby Shivo kiss? Years and years ago in Florida, she was basically had been on life support for, I think, a couple of years, and her husband wanted to unplug her. She was brain dead. She was completely dead. There was nothing there, and he wanted to unplug her. And the, 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 um, the, her parents didn't want it. And they actually passed a law in the Florida legislature that just applied to Terry Schiavo. Why just, you know... Because in the name of the right to life, quote. What life? What life? You're a vegetable. What life? Disconnect it. Let them die with dignity. Let, let, let it end. I mean, it, it's tragic. It's sad anytime children die. But it is what it is. Ah, sad, sad note. All right. You know, what we hear in the owner book show for freedom. We're for human flourishing for individual human flourishing. The only system that provides that is freedom. And in healthcare, that freedom is necessary across the board. All right. You've been listening to another show, the Yaron Brook Show. We're on the Blaze Radio Network. See you next week. All right. Thanks. I'm going to send you an email with some photographs. Let me know if you have any ideas. Okay. Bye. Thanks. You too.